Sometimes people will just say nasty things that I don't like your face. <laughs> what can I do about it? Hi, my name is Glenda Chong and uh, I'm a presenter for CNA and you'll see me presenting the news to you on CNA and on Channel 5. Today, I'll be reading a series of assumptions about me. Very nervous. Usually, I tell you the facts and um, I don't tell you about my life, so yeah, a little bit nervous. All the time! <laughs> because of work. So that's why you know you get to Google, you get to Google yourself all the time. I do eat my words, so I have to be um, a bit careful when I speak sometimes. <laughs> so Glenda Chong has a good voice since young, so she was talent scouted to be a news anchor. No, I wasn't talent scouted to be a news anchor, but I did know that I wanted to be a news anchor since I was 13 or 14 years old. I remember standing in front of the TV and telling my dad and mom and pointing to the news presenter at that time saying, I want to be her. That her was Diana Cole. No, this is not my first job. Do you want the background story or shall I just tell you TLDR version? Too long, didn't read? Okay. I was a teenage model. That was my first job. The first time I went on, it wasn't in Singapore, it was in London. I remember they had a scheduling error and there was no presenter to read the one one minute of the headline news. And um, being so young, I was super gung-ho. I, I raised my hand and I said, I will read the news. And I was extremely nervous, but because I had raised my hand, I had to be very confident. Take it till you make it kind of thing. <laughs> News presenters like Glenda Chong are held to a different standard than actresses in Media Corp. I won't say held to a different standard, but we do have uh, OB markers that we have to be mindful of. Um, I'll give you an example. So actresses are allowed um, to endorse products. We are not allowed to endorse products because you trust us to deliver the news to you. And so we want to do it to our best abilities and that is our responsibility. And um, so we don't uh, endorse products. Glenda Chong hopes to host her very own Hokkien variety show after as her retirement job after the release of the viral video. Okay, here's one thing I need to clarify. I don't speak Hokkien. I was just mimicking the studio director in my ear and he was just talking to me and so I just mimicked what he said and added a little bit about my Tamo. That's all. No, I cannot speak Hokkien and I will be unable to host this uh, variety show. That might go on Facebook, whatever. Yes, I do foresee myself being a news presenter for, a, you know, for a long time. I like telling people stories. That's what I like about it. Like being the first to get the information and um, telling you stories. As a news presenter, she can't show her emotions on TV even when it's a sad piece of news. That is so true. I mean, if it's a happy, uh, very new, happy neutral story, like for instance, if it's a panda story, yes, you know, you're allowed to show that you're happy because everybody loves panda. Who doesn't? But uh, I'll tell you a story. Um, I remember the first time reading a very, very sad piece of news and that was um, the uh, separation from North Korea and South Korea. The families were separated. And I remember reading that story and I was going to tear up. I just had to pause, swallow my saliva and just continuing presenting the news but I really nearly cried and that story always gets me always I know that that story is coming up because I would have read it beforehand um, so then I try and prep myself but even then it's still you know it's still very emotional for me fun uh, yeah I think the morning news was fun uh, I remember it being fun with Suzanne Jung and um, Stephen Chia well Stephen Chia is just a joker so he's a, a, a real joker and so you know you can see that translate on TV as well so that made it fun <laughs> Glenda Chong's pet peeve is that she can't stand it when someone pronounces a word incorrectly no actually I'm, I'm completely okay with it I have no issues with that I'll tell you something fun so everybody knows the word go stun means go backwards it's actually go a stun so I'm completely fine with it and some people mispronounce um, T H there, right? So it's not, uh, it's, it's all right to mispronounce there because in Malay it's dia. So it's a different way of pronouncing there. Totally okay with it. And I actually take my hats off to anybody who can speak two or more languages. That's just amazing. Okay, it's not the most difficult word, but the word I, I struggle with is the MET agency. So MET has a long form to it. I always shorten it. If you see me on TV, I'm always shortening it to the MET agency. Mirror agency. 
There we go. News presenters' jobs are rather easy. Just read from the teleprompter. Who said? <laughs> <laughs> Who said it's easy? No, it's not uh, that easy. Yes, we have a teleprompter, but it is far from easy. Oh, there's so, ma <laughs> so many different things going on at one time. If it's breaking news, you have no idea what the news is because it is breaking. So therefore, you have to present it in a very knowledgeable way. And that is pulling the information you have from everything you know um, about a particular subject. That's difficult. And there's no teleprompter then. CNA employs it and I think it's great because we do a lot of explainers. For instance, the uh, Thai cave, we were able to show you um, the difficulties and why they couldn't escape. So I think, uh, you know, it makes our work easier in terms of trying to explain a subject to you. There is so much noise and chaos around the world. News presenters like Glenda Chong get affected by them as it messes with your head. Oh yes, it does. Let me tell you, it really does. So I tell you what I, I do to unwind. Um, I'll go home. I still watch TV, yeah, so I'll go home and watch TV. So I'll watch cartoons or I'll watch um, cooking shows or I'll watch, um, you know, anything that doesn't require a lot of uh, extra brain power. Well, when I was a correspondent uh, living in Shanghai and uh, I reported on the uh, earthquake, that was uh, very sad. That took a toll, I have to say. I remember calling my um, parents and my family members. I remember calling them almost every night and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I just want to know I love you. So if anything happens to me, I just want to know I love you. So yes, it does take a toll. Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was one of my most um, challenging and stressful times. Well, when you're there, you just do it because it's a job. At the end of the day, speaking to people that ground, like, that ground you, like my family members. So, you know, speaking to them, uh, I remember telling my cousin, don't tell my, my mom and dad that I'm going to cover the story. And <laughs> he said to me, but you're going to be on TV. They're going to see you, you know. I'm like, oh yeah, by then it's too late already. They can't do anything about it. <laughs> you must be pretty or handsome in order for you to be on air to read the news. No, nonsense. You just need to have that X factor. I cannot tell you what that X factor is. It's just that when you're on in front of the camera and if the camera loves you, the camera loves you. Is there a presenter voice? No, I don't think there is a presenter voice, but you cannot be... You cannot sound like a child. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do. I, speak like, I do speak a little bit like this at home. Actually, I think I speak faster at home. Way faster. And uh, I eat my words. I, I do eat my words a lot, yeah. People will say nasty things when you're on TV. I mean, because you, they, seem, they, they think they have every right to say nasty things about you because you're on air. So people will say nasty things um, and it might hurt you. Um, so you just have to, your skin has to be very thick. Sometimes um, there'll be criticisms uh, of you know, the way you present or you don't know your stuff. Then you take that criticism and um, you turn it into constructive criticism and you better yourself. Sometimes people will just say nasty things that like, I don't like your face. <laughs> what can I do about it? News is dying. No one is reading them. These news presenters should just be on TikTok instead. I don't think news is dying. You still get your news. Um, anything that you read is news. So no one is reading them. You are. You're reading them. Even on TikTok, you're reading them. We're on TikTok. Find us on TikTok. Follow us on TikTok. Assumptions about me. Done. <laughs> Nerve-wracking, nerve-wracking. I'm not used to, you know, being asked or this um, rapid-fire questions. It's scarier than reading the news because for news, I mean, I'm reading facts, right? In this, I'm telling you about my personal life. That's scary. Thank you for watching this episode of Assumptions About Me and you can catch me presenting the news on CNA and on Channel 5. Now, if you like this video, please like, subscribe and comment. Bye.